Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Romans chapter 15. <clears throat> this video is addressing something that, uh, especially of late, has been be, has become to be very troubling to me. <clears throat> but before we begin, turn to Romans chapter 15. We will be reading verses 17 under verse 24 in Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, verses 17 on to verse 24. I have therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me. To make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Paul was not going to do anything outside of what the Lord had wrought by him. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter um, 7, Paul gives, Paul gives his judgment as one that is filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Okay? Yes. But there again, gospel for today in this dispensation was revealed on to Paul okay it was okay what can we say about that now let's continue verse 19 through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Elycrium I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea. So I have strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see. And they that have not heard shall understand. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you, but now having no more place in these parts, and having a great desire these many years to come unto you, whenever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey, and to be brought on my way thitherward by you, if first I be somewhat filled with your company. <clears throat> now, look at verse 20. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Brother Brian Denlinger, a little while ago, did a video entitled Christians or the Church of God. In that video, he went through the scriptures proving that the church of God, the church of the living God, never referred to ourselves as Christians. Okay? And Brother Brian on his main channel has deleted that video. And what was very interesting was, after he had done that video, something like the very next video, he kept referring to we, the Church of the Living God, as Christians. And when I personally emailed him of this, um, he was, he was kind of like, yeah, yeah, it's not a doctrinal issue. Now, Are you in sin for calling yourself a Christian? No. 
No, you are not. You're not. Okay? You're not. There again, what saith the scriptures? What saith the scriptures? Christian appears three times in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Okay, Acts chapter 11, verse 26. <clears throat> Acts chapter 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians First, in Antioch, were called Christians in Antioch. By who? The lost world. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, verse 28. Ah, <clears throat> oh, let's see. We will begin from verse 24 on to verse 29. Acts chapter 26, verses 24 on to verse 29. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus. But speak the forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Was Agrippa, you know, he believed the prophets. Yeah, he believed the prophets. But was he a saved man? And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. King Agrippa is not a saved man. He called us Christians. Okay? Now, in the New Testament, the word Christian appears three times. Okay, twice in Acts, and there's one more occurrence, which everybody clings to. Okay? Which everybody clings to. Throughout the scriptures, however, we see Church of God, and also Church of the Living God, which I use primarily. Okay? Let's go through these again. Brother Brian did this himself. Yes, he did, and I'm doing it. Brother Brian took that down that video. It's not a doctrinal issue. You're not in sin if you call yourself a Christian. Okay? You're not. Okay? And also, the argument is, well, you're being associated with that man who is called Christ. Right? Right? Let's say it the scriptures. Okay? If we adhere to the scriptures by faith and practice, we ought to do our best to have our speech in line with the scriptures. Okay? We ought to. Okay? We ought to do our best to do that. Okay? Now, as far as Church of God, Acts 20. <clears throat> Acts 20. Verse 28. 
Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Purchased with his own blood. We are his bones and we are his flesh. So see, see, we're Christians, right? Says Church of God. Okay? They were called first, we were called first, we were called Christians first in Antioch. Called by who? The lost world. King of Agrippa. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. He was a lost man. We're not getting to 1 Peter just yet. Because we're going to expound on that a little bit. Okay? Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. <clears throat> Verses 1 on to verse 3. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes our brother, unto the Christians which is at... <clears throat> Unto the church of God which is at Corinth. To them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. With all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, one and the same. Okay? Look at verse 2. Unto the church of God which is at Corinth. Okay, the Church of God. Called out the Assembly of God. Okay? I know the care Catholics have Assemblies of God. Okay? I know that. But look at what the devil has done to what is called Christian. I'm going to get on in that in just a minute. Okay? Under the Church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, Separate than, other than, you're saved, born again, converted. You're sealed with the Holy Ghost. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that Spirit, dwells within you. Okay? Called to be saints. You're saved, you're a saint. <laughs> you're, you're saved, you're a saint. A saint is not defined by these twits, Roman Catholicism. Okay? Let's continue this. With all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Okay? Which call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, called to be saints of the Church of God. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. It doesn't say to the Christians. It says the church of God. Okay? <laughs> Again, brethren, did they, back then, during these times, refer to themselves as Christian. We're getting to 1 Peter 4. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay? No, they didn't. Is it a sin for you to call yourself a Christian? No, it isn't. It isn't. Okay, brethren, and those of you, brethren who adhere to this, that we ought to be calling ourselves the Church of God or Church of the Living God, which is the ground and pillar of the truth. Okay? Where the truth of the Scriptures ought to come from. Okay? You get it? Okay? First uh, Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God? And shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? 
I praise you not. Okay? Church of God. Church of God. Okay? Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the Christians. Because I persecuted the church of God. Okay. Second Corinthians. Chapter 1. The very first verse. Like I said. Brother Brian already did this. He took it down. And if you watch his videos. Ever since he did this. He's still clinging to calling people Christians. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth. Now, is that talking about a building? No. That's calling, talking about the people. The body. Okay? People. Persons. Spirit, soul, and body. Not a building. Okay? It's talking about people. Unto the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Let's read verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, one and the same. Okay? One and the same. Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay? Go to Galatians chapter 1, verse 13. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Let's read verse 14. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. Church of God. Okay? Church of God. Now go to 1 Timothy, chapter 3. <clears throat> when I heard that video, and when I watched it, and we, we went through the scriptures, I was cut to the heart. I was convicted. And we're, we're, after we're done in 1 Timothy, we'll get to 1 Peter, Okay. Show me. Where were they calling themselves Christians? Show it to me. Show it to me. Show it to me. What do you do with that? What do you do with that? Hmm? Like, for example, the Antichrist, right? We all, a lot of us say, the Antichrist, in the authorized version of the scriptures, show me the Antichrist. Show it to me. Show it to me. The Antichrist. The definitive article, Antichrist. Show it to me in the scriptures. Okay? What says the scriptures, brethren? What do you do with that? Hmm? Again. Rapture. It's not in the scriptures. The catching away is. Right? What do you do with that? Oh, because they don't know what that the rapture is called the catching away actually scripturally you know what you do and I've done this many a time witnessing onto people outside you know what you do 
Instead of saying, well, there's a rapture coming, it's actually called the catching away. No. You know what you do? You say, there's going to be a catching away, falsely referred to as the rapture. You say what it is truthfully first, catching away, and then, oh, falsely called the rapture. Okay? Just because people won't understand it, so we're supposed to... No, 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 no. 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 First Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Uh, not Thessalonians. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Okay, and now, what I used. First Timothy 3, verse, what is that? I can't read my own writing. Verse 15. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. The pillar and ground of the truth, the church of the living God. Okay? And that is what I refer to us as, the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Those of us who are saved, born again, converted, of the church of the living, ground, uh, living God, we are to stand for the scriptures. From the church of the living God, it ought to come the truth of the scriptures. Correct doctrine. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? But now, okay, let's go to 1 Peter. Oh, I know you're itching for that. Go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 4. <clears throat> Verses 14 on to verse 19 to close out that chapter. Okay? If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. Aha! Aha! On their part, he is evil spoken of. You're one of them Christians. You're one of them Christians. Okay? But, now pay attention to this. Pay attention to this. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Here we go. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Look at verse 15 and verse 16, particularly. But let none of you suffer as a 
murderer, okay, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Okay? Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Okay? What did Peter mention here in verse 15? Murderer, thief, evildoer, busybody. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, okay, it would be, it is better for us today, especially if we are going to suffer as being named a Christian by those who call us that, okay, it's better to be labeled as that in your suffering than being of the church of the living God, suffering as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody in other men's matters. Okay? Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Looking up at verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of. You are a Christian. But on your part he is glorified. Think about that. Okay? Now think about this. Okay? Now we saw the context here. Okay? And what he is talking about in verse 16. Okay? For us today, in this dispensation, so close to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, wrongly called the pre-tribulation rapture and the great tribulation. Okay? Wrongly called those things. See how we, see how we do that? See? Give them the truth first and then, oh, it's wrongly called this. I put that into practice outside my door on numerous occasions. And yes, when you say to someone, oh, I am of the church of the living God, they call us Christians. Uh, you'll, you'll see it. It's like, huh? And then you say, they, meaning the lost world, call us Christians. You'll see the, oh, the light come on. Okay. When you tell someone who's lost about the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, they'll look at you like, huh? And it's like, wrongly called the rapture and the great tribulation. They're like, oh, okay, they get it. You tell them what it is first, and then it's like, oh, it's wrongly called this. How, how, how can you say that? I have standard. I have scriptures. Okay, Peter is saying, if you're going to suffer as a Christian, glorify God on that behalf. That's better than suffering as what? A murderer, a thief, or an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Okay? And it says in verse 14, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Right? For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of. But on your part he is glorified. On their part he is evil spoken of. You're, you're a Christian. And in your suffering, I want to show you, Lord willing, how those of us of the church of the living God truly Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Okay? Now, here's a very interesting argument. Go to Isaiah chapter 65. Here is Isaiah chapter 65. When Peter used Christian, it was in comparison to what they are calling us, and it is better to suffer as a Christian rather than a murderer, a thief, an evildoer. See, but there again, we, 
Church of the Living God did not refer to us, to ourselves as Christians. We didn't. We didn't. Is it a sin to do so? No. There may have been a time way, 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 way back when when being associated with Christian might have actually meant something. But in context to today, right now, before the catching away, but before we get to that, Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. We will be reading verses 1 under verse 16 in Isaiah 65. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessels. Got to remember, doctrinally and dispensationally, this is written unto the Jews. We have to remember to rightly divide the word of truth. But let's continue, okay? Which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Now, very quickly remember this. Verse 3 on to verse 5. Okay, remember that. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens, and burneth incense upon altars of brick. Hmm. Sounds kind of Catholic, doesn't it? Which remain among the graves, and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh, and broth of abominable things is in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. He's talking about those who he had spread out his hands, and they rejected him. Talking about his people, the Jews. Okay? Now, let's continue. From verse 7. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon all the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servants, for my servants' sake, that I may not destroy them all. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay. And mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. Mine elect, the Jews, okay, and my servants, okay, making reference unto the millennial kingdom, where we, the church of the living God, are coming down with our Lord Jesus Christ at his second coming. Okay? His servants. Okay? And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks, and the valley of Accor, a place for the herds to lie down in, for my people that have sought me. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offerings unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all but 
and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart. And shall howl for vexation of spirit. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee. And call his servants by another name. Oh. That he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth, because the former troubles are forgotten, and because they are hid from mine eyes. Verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen, for the Lord God shall slay thee, and call his servants by another name. Christians! No. We just looked at the occurrences of Christian lost people called us that. And when Peter referred to it, he was referring to it as in the context of lost people saying, you're one of those Christians? Better to die being labeled as a Christian than a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, and as a busybody in other men's matters. But there again, within the New Testament, we, those are who are who who are of his bones and of his flesh, did not refer to ourselves as Christians. We didn't. We didn't. Okay? What do you do with that? What do you do with that? Okay? What do you do with that? It's the church of God. The church of the living God. Which I adhere to. The church of God. The church of the living God. Okay? Now, now here's the thing, brethren. Here's the thing. Christians, Christians, Catholics call themselves Christians. Lutherans call themselves Christians. And you know that today, the Lutherans basically signed a concord or compact with Catholicism saying, basically, oh, we're sorry for what Martin Luther did. Let us all be one. Okay? Calvinists call themselves Christians. And Calvin teaches elect and non-elect. That you have nothing, that it's against your will that you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. Okay? That's heresy. Okay? Calvinism is heresy. All right? Christian scientists call themselves Christians, where this evil devil witch who is burning in hell right now. Okay? Had the nerve to say that Messiah is mine. And again, note the Knights Templar insignia on there. Okay? You shall be as gods, right? Mormons call themselves Christians. And yet, unto the Mormon, it is their sole desire 
to become their own god of a planet, and their wife is going to create spirit babies or some nonsense. And Mormons also taught that God the Father in the flesh lay with Mary. Okay? They call themselves Christians. Joseph Smith. A Mason. Yeah. They call themselves Christians. Jehovah's. Now, about the Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses. Personally, and I've, I've had many a run-in with the Jehovah's. Personally, I have not encountered any Jeho referring to themselves as Christian. My brother, Brother Alexander Hartley, has given testimony that some of the Jehos that he has been around has referred to themselves as Christians. Okay? I have not encountered that. Okay? They call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. But there again, Jehos are associated with Christian. Okay? So, and also too, put into this. Put into this. You go up to somebody and you ask, uh, you mention, what do you think a Christian is? Usually, right away, what do they think of? What's the first thing they think of? Catholics. Right? And also, too, nowadays, you say Christian to some people. Oh, you mean like uh, Sid Roth? Oh, like Kenneth Copeland? Like Joyce Myers? Like Joel Osteen? Like Creflo Dollar? Huh? Like Rob Parsley? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you see? So, all these, all these, marks to be Christian. And you, as the Church of the Living God, say, well, what well, well, about the, the, those guys? No, 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 no. And the devil has done a lot, especially at this time, to throw a blanket term over what is deemed Christian. And then, I mean, look at it, you got that Bethel Church, right? That, what is his name, Bill Johnson guy? You got so many people ascribing themselves to Christian when those of us of the Church of the Living God are that small? What, are we going to try to outvoice those who are calling themselves Christians when we know, when we know, First Timi uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, this, no, uh, uh, verses 1, under verse 7, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Brethren, now look, look, again, it's not a sin for you to refer to yourself as Christian, but think about it, think 
about this? What do you what do you do with this? They did not call themselves Christians. And when Peter refers to it, it is in reference as to the loss persecuting us as being Christians. And it is, it is better for you to suffer as a Christian than a murderer. Okay? A thief, an evildoer, and a busybody. But nevertheless, we, who are his bones and his flesh, did not refer to ourselves as Christians. Prove me wrong through the scriptures. Prove me wrong through the scriptures. Go to Isaiah 65, another name? No. No. If that were the case, why is Christian only mentioned, number one, three times, twice clearly by lost people, and the third time in the context of what lost people are going to label you as? You tell me. You tell me. And with what here in America all the false prophets have done to what is called Christian? I don't know about you. I don't want any association with that. As for me, I'm of the church of the living God. How about you? How about you? Again, you are not in sin if you are clinging to calling yourself Christian. Like I said, when I watched that video by Brother Brian, and um, I followed him along, as I always do, when I listen to people who are of the Church of the Living God, um, you know I'm following you. If you're reading through the scriptures, you ought to be. Okay? But um, it, that was right. We, who are his bones and his flesh, never called ourselves Christians. And I remember somebody got on my brother, uh, Alexander, about that. It's like, well, that was wrong to, you know, say that we shouldn't be calling us ourselves Christians. Again, you, you know, they cling, you cling to 1 Peter chapter 4, don't you? Don't you? There again, the context of where that appears is suffering for God, for Christ, at the hands of those of the lost who will label you as that. Not that we called ourselves that. Do, do you see? And like I said, brethren, the catching away, falsely called the rapture, okay? I don't care if it's going to be a rapturous event, okay? Yes, it's going to be glorious, yes. But come on, get rapture away. Rapture, rapture is not found in the scriptures. And hey, 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 hey. All of you enemies out there who believe that the Christians are going to go through the Great Tribulation, right? All of you post-fibbers, right? Even you will be quick to mention rapture is not in the scriptures. Or you'll say Bible. And you're right. Rapture is not in the scriptures. You're right. It's catching away. And like I said, th this is a pers personal conviction of mine. And I do my best to adhere to it. Because Calvinists, 
Christian scientists, Lutherans, Mormons, Catholics, pure Catholic, Pentecatholic, Seventh-day Adventists. They're all Christians. The false prophets. They were, they're all Christians. I'm of the Church of the Living God. What about you? What about you? And, and again, brethren, brethren. Okay. Just, okay, you, you're witnessing out there, laying tracks. The Lord orchestrates a moment where you get to share the scriptures, the gospel, okay? Don't use the terms that are false. Use the scriptural terms and then point out that the false terms for the scriptural terms. Get it? And I, I, I put that into practice. And yes, you say, I'm of the Church of the Living God. What denomination is that? Uh, uh, inaccurately referred to as Christians. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. You know, there's coming a catching away, huh? Uh, wrongly referred to as the rapture. We're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, huh? Um, wrongly termed the great, the great tribulation. You see? You see? The church of the living God is the ground and the pillar of the truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And, and brethren, Okay, okay. Look outside your door. Okay, look outside. What's going on right now? Okay? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Oh, Brad, you're being petty. Am I? Am I? Prove it to yourself. Go ahead. Go up to someone who's lost. Can you tell me what a Christian is? That's what they're going to say first, boy. Anyway. That's going to be it for this video. God is a God of distinction, brethren. And as for me, personally, um, I'm of the church of the living God. What about you? I hope so. I hope so. That's going to be it for this video. If this offends you, I hope so. Good. Pray about it. And this chin only appears three times. And we those who were before us of his bones and his flesh did not refer to ourselves as such. Prove me wrong, please. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our merciful Father, 
Lord Jesus Christ, our Comforter, may he be magnified. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.